Hello and welcome back to another bloody good waffle. Yes, it's that time again, that time where I waffle any old bollocks into the camera for your viewing pleasure. I hope you have had a fabulous couple of weeks since my last waffle. Uh, that was a fun one, wasn't it? Um, yeah, and uh, I haven't been up to much, to be honest. Um, well, I have. I've had some ups and downs the last couple of weeks, you know, as it is. Um, but hey, -ho, I'll get into a few more details about that later. So um, what's, what have I got coming up for review soon? What have I got coming up for review? Um, I've still got the Nada to review. Uh, I've been using the Nada quite uh, extensively lately. Very nice dripper indeed, uh, as you probably know. Um, but yeah, I've got it at the moment on my uh, on my top hat. I got a nice little matchy drip tip here that was sent to me from White Owl Drip Tips. Um, I'm going to take a bit more of a look at that now. It's a really nice little drip tip here. It's got sort of like a hybrid style um, thing going on, but it matches my top hat perfectly and uh, fits rather nice in the Nada. So Nada, Nada, I can't say that without going Nada. But uh, yeah, nice little drip tip there. Um, have a look at this as well, which I got sent a load of these recently from a guy called Jacek in uh, Poland, I believe, um, of a company called Custom Woods EU. I'll put the link in the description, but look, look at that, look, it's got a bloody good vaping engraved in the wood there. Look, it's like a little mod throne. It's not just a mod stand, it's like a throne. It's, oh, look at it, absolutely stunning. You've got a little uh, 510 there for an atomizer. Put your uh, mod on there and just show it off for the world or yourself, which is what I do. Uh, but yeah, he sent me a load, uh, really nice as well. Um, uh, you should check out the stuff. Affordable as well, really good pricing on there. Um, so you'll have to have a look at the website and I know he does custom jobbies and things like that um, I'm going to try and get a little list for SV and see if I can get an SV stand that everyone can have you know he's got Atty stands, mod stands he's got those here are like oh, right into the camera there. he's got like little singular Atty stands look for when you're building and things like that nice little one here look engraved with a bloody good vaping on it for like more of your Atties he's got loads and uh, they look really really Nice, so uh, thank you very much, Jacek. They uh, are really sort of like proud of my collection up there now, all, all sort of looking at me. It's really great. Um, I've also got, of course, the Wapari uh, Wide to review. I've got the Fluid Momentum, that little itty bitty dinky DNA 4018650 mod. I've got a couple of RDAs, uh, one out of Poland, uh, one out of Hungary. Uh, God, I am hungry, actually. Um, and what else? And also, I've got something here. Yeah, look at that, look. Hey, the K-Fun 5 landed with me today, and um, I did ask if I was allowed to show it off in this waffle, and uh, yes, I can. Um, and here it is, sitting on top of my Wapari wide. Have a little blast. Mm. Uh, you'll be happy to know this is not a thousand pieces this time. Um, it's It's like the Big Daddy V3 Mini. Um, it's sort of like, you know, it's that was kind of kind of like a beta tester for this, I suppose. Um, it's big. It's big. Um, that's, you know, I mean, vaping wise, it's doing lovely, um, but it is big. So uh, be warned about that. But yeah, it looks great. And um, I've been in, I've only whipped this first wick I've had in it today. Just nice. Now, a lot of people are looking forward to this one. Um, I believe the release date of this is uh, Monday, the 16th of May. Um, I'll be doing a review after that, of course, um, but I won't leave it too long. They've given me four to six weeks, bless them. Um, but no, I'll do that quite quick because I know people are going to want to have a little look at this up close in the deck and what have you. But yeah, looks great. I think it's got a great look to it. Um, just wish it wasn't so damn big. But that's me. I complain about big atomizers all the time. No doubt there'll be a, a little mini kit or something in the future, but so far, so bloody good. So, K Fun 5, look at that. Um, what am I vaping in there at the moment? I've got this from uh, Dunford's E Liquids, the Tanuki. Tanuki, is that right, Chris? If I said that right, Tanuki. Um, which is like a nice custody sort of vape. It's. Uh, custody. It's very nice, though. Very nice, very rich. 
Uh, I don't know if I can do the whole tank of this today. I might have to switch back to me summer slurps. But yeah, very nice. Um, what else have I got? Um, I know I've got a D&G mod coming. Um, so uh, that's kind of like a... Um, it almost looks a bit like a Predator, but it's it's not. It's a really nice looking design. And also, I think what you can do is remove the faceplate on it and get different sort of faceplates for it. So say you've got one rhodium plated, say you've got one in 24 karat gold plating, um, stainless steel and what have you, you can actually replace them, change the look of your, of your mod. Uh, stab wood, of course. Um, looks great, um, so I'm looking forward to that. I do think I've got an elemental mod coming as well, which is a, a 26650C frame. Um, I know I've got a, a Hydra coming, which is a, a mech mod. Um, what else? I've got a couple of other bits coming, I'm just, I just forget. Um, so what's been happening in the vaping world? Um, I don't know, well obviously the, uh, the FDA announcement um, the other week, which is a, a massive, massive, kicking the nuts for the guys over in the US and obviously around the rest of the world because that sort of stuff does uh, resonate and and basically um, cause a sort of tidal wave across the uh, globe, um, really. And, I mean, them... Uh, ludicrous. Absolutely ludicrous, uh, some of these um, restrictions coming on. Um, I mean, obviously, the one that we're all happy about, which which I believe as vapors we wanted anyway, which is an age restriction, that's, that's, that's a given... Um, so, and that's, but that's probably the only fucking one, you know, and obviously, yes, of course, we don't want any shit in the juice, yeah, but I mean, the, the products and, um, and the, the money and the research, I mean, the FDA has proposed that, I mean, to put a new product into market, apparently it's going to take uh, the FDA about like a 5,000 odd hours to approve each product, you know, so the delay on that and the money, I mean, anything up to sort of like, I think they've said between 700,000 and a million to actually put one of these products out. I mean, it, beggar's belief, beggar's belief, you know. Um, so I, I hope, you know, guys out there, especially in the US and things like that, I hope, you know, um, want to join groups like Not Blowing Smoke, um, Kassar and things like that and, and start, you know, trying to do your little bit. And I mean, all the banning of advertising as well. We've now got to start, like I mentioned um, a little while ago, we've and I'm sure we all do it. Uh, we've got to now start promoting this ourselves. You know, if they're going to cut down on all advertising and things like that, you know, smokers eventually aren't really going to discover it as as quick as they have been and as well informed as they have been, you know. So it's up to us now to, to tap that smoker on the shoulder and, and explain that there is a healthier alternative and to put them in the right direction. Because, you know, if they get there, if the TPD gets their way um, with the current re regulations and uh, the FDA get their way, nobody's going to fucking know about it and nobody's going to be able to afford to do it. So, you know, it's all back to smoking and it's all, you know, well, well, I don't think I could ever go back personally, you know. I'll be doing it all underground. We're pretty much underground as it is, us hobbyists. Um, but, I mean, for all those new people, you know, our children, our children's children, our things like that, we, we you know, it's it's absolutely disgusting that, that this is uh, that this is going on, you know. Something that's potentially the biggest health breakthrough since fucking penicillin, you know, um, that could save fucking millions and millions and millions of lives um, to be a price tag put on it fucking unbelievable and it was really nice to watch the uh, lord's uh, grand committee the other day i don't know if you saw that a uh, bunch of old boys you know talking about vaping uh, talking about shisha pens you know uh, and things like that and it was good and, and, it, and it was nice listening to um sort of there was a couple of old there was an old boy in there who started off the talk uh, talking about his experience switching from cigarettes to vaping himself you know it was really quite fun to listen to and it's like oh yes, yes i used to smoke you know 20 20 cigarettes a day a packet a day and you know and then i found one of these shisha pens and um i i i've never had a cigarette since he's got this guy and he's going you know and and, and one other thing you know it's how much of these packet of cigarettes cost now? Nine pounds. Nine pounds a day it used to cost me. Now I just go out and buy myself a little ten milliliter bottle of juice a week at about seven or eight pounds, you know, and and it's I think it's very important to, to remember that it's it's poor people that smoke mostly. Mostly poor people. God bless him. Uh, mostly poor people smoke, isn't is that right? Yes, I'd love if my honourable friend would give me the figures. Uh, but poor people smoke and wouldn't it be good that they had even more money, you know, and I've saved fortunes. 
I've saved lots of money. And that's great because he's now got more money for more cocaine and prostitutes. So a win-win for everybody. All jokes aside, very good watch. You know, it was an hour or so long. Um, it's nice to see that those sort of people in power do actually, you know, have some intelligence left in them uh, and understand that the fact that this is a major breakthrough medically. Um, it is uh, it's going, it should be a major part of um of education and getting people off of cigarettes and uh you know it always seems like we're just fighting a losing battle and nobody seems to get it and every sort of bit of negativity they can find they're using against us so it's good to see that there are some people out there in power who who understand that um the vaping is actually potentially uh, a huge huge lifesaver and uh, a benefit for all that's involved you know that was great so it's good to watch. If you didn't see it, it's on YouTube. I'll put the link to the video in the description. So, you know, if you've got an hour and a half to spare, even if you haven't, I suggest watching it. You know, I did post it up yesterday. And a couple of people went, bloody hour and a half. But but it's an hour and a half. Do you know what I mean? You can sit and watch that for an hour and a half. It's 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 got some good points to it. And it's uh, nice to hear things in a positive light. You know, we all know we're up against... We all know who we're up against, and we all know it's about money and money are singular. There's nothing else got to do with it. And they'll come up with every sort of little fucking excuse they can, but it all boils down to tax and money and who's getting it and who ain't. You know, so, but it is a, a nice positive video to watch. I've had some sad news, to be honest. A terrible, terrible, terrible news. Um, I went away a couple of weeks ago uh, with my family. It was uh, my son Charlie's birthday. So we took him down to Scarborough. You know, it never sounds posh. You know, it ain't posh. Well, it, it was where we went. We went to a place called Moulton. Very posh indeed. But uh, Scarborough. We went to a place called, like, there was Flamingo Land there, which is all amusement parks, and Moulton, which is this lovely rural village, you know, with its like a really old-fashioned cinema in it and, and loads of food places. You know, I put on a few pounds. And we took him away. We had a nice little cottage we rented down there, adult tub, you know, safe. And um, got a phone call when we were there and unfortunately and I, I don't know if you remember my my dog Lola there she is my little angel there my dog Lola um and she was being looked after um, by somebody and unfortunately had a terrible accident and she passed away two years old my little Lola uh, my little princess and uh, it absolutely broke our hearts you know we was on holiday at the time um couldn't really enjoy ourselves after that and then come back and obviously, you know, and I, I had to tell my kids, and I wouldn't recommend that to, and, well, you don't recommend it to anybody, but that's one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, to be honest, you know. I can usually make light of all shit situations. Um, something I'm quite good at is making people giggle or smile and that, and I pride myself in that. But when it comes to something like that, that, that humour is, you know, there's nothing you can do. You, um, I mean, it hit my eldest very hard. He was 15 and he used to take her for walks and bath her and um, taught her how to sit with treats and things like that. So it absolutely devastated him and my wife, of course. So, you know, I was absolutely grief struck and it uh, proper broke my heart. Picked up her ashes two days ago. <clears throat> Got a nice little sort of thing with Lola Mortar on a plaque on it. Nice little wooden box, yes, I know wood typical um uh, but yeah it looks lovely and um yeah but it was um it was quite heartbreaking to be honest and uh i mean i i, I remember i think it was two years ago this month that i actually introduced her to you guys and um brought her into a waffle um i'll just i'll just show you that now if you remember uh yeah we now have a uh teacup chihuahua pup in my house let's have a bring her over here now and she is called lola and you know these people buy these little dogs see that see that there look at it say hello look and they dress them up in these silly little things look and she's tiny she don't really do anything she just sits there and shakes every now and then and plays a little bit and then goes to sleep and they're beautiful and they? you're beautiful you don't like vaping do you she don't like vaping yeah, so there she was, heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking, you know, uh, hit my family uh, pretty damn hard. And I remember, I remember speaking to a few people afterwards, uh, just saying, you know, what's the best thing to do and blah, 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 the house is sort of like really down, really upset. And somebody said, well, you know, the best thing I ever did was go out and get a, a new dog. So I went online. <laughs> 
found myself another uh, Chihuahua breeder and I went and had a look and uh, I came home with this little lady here. This is Nala. Say hello Nala. Aww. You know, it was really fun. Um, I loved going in there. There was so many puppies walking around, running around and going crazy. It was really hard to choose. It was actually between Nala and another one. And um, and I remember bringing this home and like, my family lit up. They were just absolutely besotted with her. Loved her to bits, you know. My sons were all happy again, so it was so nice to see. But then I started thinking, oh, I feel really bad now, you know. I, I, you know, I left one there, you know. I chose this one, which I'm really happy about, but I feel really guilty about leaving the other one. So I went back <laughs> and I picked up this little girl here and this is Bo. So Nala and Bo. Sounds like a 70s cop drama, doesn't it? Nala and Bo. But yeah, these are two little sisters. Um, Nala weighed um, 800 grams at uh, eight weeks and Bo weighed 500 grams. Didn't you? Didn't you? Mm. Mm -hmm. So tiny, tiny. I mean, Bo's a proper little teacup. She's a tiny little one. And um, Nala's very, very playful. But yeah, I mean, it, uh, I mean that, it broke my heart with Lola. I was never into pets and animals until Lola. And now I'm so besotted by Chihuahuas. It's unbelievable. They're just they're awesome little guys. Um, really loving, really playful but really, really delicate, you know, and it's it's taught me a valuable lesson. Uh, you know, I don't think I'll, I'll ever leave these girls now. I don't think if I'm going on holiday again. Um, but, you know, absolutely, you know, and it's the reason why I didn't go to Expo. I spent so much money at Vape Jam, um, and then obviously we went on holiday, which I spent a fortune on, and then came back, I had vet's fees to deal with, and then I went and bought these two. So I couldn't go to Expo because I was literally out of money. And I mean, you think some of the mods I review are expensive. Jesus Christ. And I had to go back and get another one because I couldn't fucking sleep. So, yeah, that's uh, that's my vape budget out the window for several years now. Um, but, yeah, really cute little girls and uh, really made my uh, family very, very happy indeed. So worth every penny. Um, yeah, uh, talked about Expo, um, wish I could have gone, seen some of the videos and uh, some of the photos everyone's posted up, looked like a fantastic event, you know, um, just brilliant, you know, uh, I went, like I said, went to Jam and I loved going to Vape Jam, very, very so good social event, it's lovely to meet everybody you speak to on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, it's really nice to meet people who watch my reviews, that's awesome, you know what I mean, um, coming up and saying, you know, thank you and all that, and no need to thank me mate, I'd do this if nobody watched, um, but still, it's uh, really humbling and uh, really nice to see, um, an expo looked like a lot of fun, I wish I could have made it, but um, yeah, it uh, it did look great, you know, it kind of brings me on to a subject, um, that I'm in, I was in two minds of whether to talk about it, but I'm terrible for not keeping my mouth shut when something bugs me. I'm really terrible for it. And uh, something's bugged me. Bugged the fucking life out of me. Now, more than ever now, us, vapors, the hobbyists, the guys who are on the social networking platforms, the guys who are watching the YouTube channels, the guys who are going to the expos, the vape jams, the vape fests, the vape collectives, in America, the showcases and, and all those things, you know, it, now more than ever, we need to have a united front. We really do. Um, the infighting and the bickering and the us versus them attitude has got to go. You know, there's so much negativity surrounding vaping, obviously, uh, with from the outside. The, on the inside, it, it should be united. And, and I've started seeing again more and more recently People complaining about elitists. I mean, what the fuck does that word even mean? And what makes an elitist an elitist? It's it's definitely not what an elitist means, what some of these people are comparing it to. And, um, you know, okay, let's get down to, the, to the, the nit and gritty of it, okay? I watched a video a couple of days ago from Vaping with Vic, okay? And he had a bad time at Expo. I'm very sorry to hear that, Vic. It's a shame. It's a... It's a great place, but it is what you make it. And it wasn't so much the video. You know, he had a, a, a moan in there, and it, it did point out something about elitist reviewers. There isn't such a thing as elitist reviewer. I review high-end gear. I do that. 
because oh, that's the sort of scene I'm in, I like that, but I could give a shit what anybody else vapes, you know, I'm not going to review um, the other stuff because I don't have time, you know, I wouldn't be able to do this then, and there'd be hardly anybody doing it, and there's so many other great reviewers already doing that, that I don't need to do it, they do it better than I would, you know, people like Vaping Biker, even and Todd does affordable gear and stuff from China, and you know what I mean, and uh, Vaping Bogan, and there's so many great reviewers already doing it, even Vic, you know, Vic does a great job at reviewing that stuff, so I don't need to. So I'm the one that goes, all right, let's find the shit that's really expensive. A bit like Top Gear, yeah? You know what I mean? It doesn't make me an elitist. The only thing I don't like are counterfeits. And there's a huge reason for that. Because of the relationships I've built doing what I do and stuff, you know, some of my best friends are mod makers. So I'm quite loyal to them. I'm not about to... Um, to to buy clones and vape clones and review counterfeits because they're my friends and it'd be like stabbing them in the back but you guys do whatever you want to do but this divide with it you know and elitist pricks elitist pricks and elite it, it's rubbish you need to leave that that shit alone now you know and we need to have a united front vape what you vape who gives a shit you know and us as youtube reviewers yeah we're just vapors like the rest of you guys we are we just got a camera and some free time Right, we have a platform here to bring nothing but positive stuff, you know, rather than negative stuff. You know, I'm not trying to be negative here, I'm just trying to explain something, you know. And we kind of have a duty, especially with what's going on everywhere around the world at the moment, to not bring any ammunition to anybody who's watching. Do you know what I'm saying? And not try to cause a divide um, because it's absolutely ridiculous, you know. And if we've got this sort of platform and people are watching us and sometimes putting us on a pedestal, they're going to believe anything we fucking say. And I've seen it. They do. And, you know, how do you know what they're telling you is the gospel truth, you know, um, in that sort of situation? I could turn up and I could just tell you something now, a complete fabrication, like, you know, three bearded men came up and told me that I was a piece of shit. And you know what? Probably half of you will believe it. And it might not necessarily be true but you'll take it for gospel and it will start this massive shitstorm going on. We need to leave that stuff and we need to just be positive and we need to just, you know, if you vape in, if you vape cheap, cheaper, more authentic stuff, cheaper stuff, don't worry about the guys who are buying the Geppettos and things like that. If you're buying the Geppettos and things like that, don't worry about the guys that are buying the cheap stuff. You're all not smoking. That's the point, you know, even if you're vaping counterfeits, you're not smoking, I don't care. The only thing I don't do is do it personally, or I don't have it in my Facebook group, but there's plenty of other Facebook groups that allow it. And I'm in some of those groups and I don't pay my, no mind to it. The point is, we need to stick together and we need to have a united front and we need to be more positive and stop this bickering and infighting and Facebook slandering and shitty YouTube comments where people are calling each other vile names and things like that. It's doing me head in, to be perfectly honest. And, and when I see a person who's very popular, and rightfully so, does a lot of work, a lot of work, and rightfully so should be popular, but when he bring, or that person brings negativity into it, when he has a platform to be positive, I just think, what a waste, what an absolute waste, you know? And um, I really hope, uh, that he can start maybe leaving the negative stuff. Negative stuff happens to everybody. Shit happens every single day. It doesn't mean I'm gonna bring it here and try and drag other people into this negativity because that serves no purpose and it just, it gives vaping a bad name and especially social media a bad name and, the, and on YouTube a bad name and trolls and all this bullshit. We've gotta have a united front and, I, I'm, you know, and, and people have also just gotta stop following what somebody says as if it's gospel which is negative you know because it might not necessarily be 100% the truth you know and um, that's all I wanted to say on that I'm sorry about that I didn't really want to do that but it's been bugging me you know positivity we got to leave the fucking negative shit at the door now it's it's fucking it's done it's done anyway that's all I got to say on that matter I, I, I hope I hope things uh, look up um, for Vic and uh, and I hope he feels better after Expo anyway very sorry to hear he had a shit time you know anyway right um, I'm going to cut now because I'm going to do best of the worst and I've got these two puppies on my lap and I've got something that's meant to be particularly nasty today 
Um, and I don't really want these puppies here when uh, when I vape it because I just don't think that's fair because, you know, the senses and all that, they've got fucking stronger senses and stuff. So uh, I'm going to cut and then I'm going to come back. So you might see a little like that, but never mind, no danger. It's just because I'm going to put the puppies uh, out of this room. Anyway, see you in a second. And we're back. Magic. Uh, yeah, just didn't want those puppies in this room when this happens. Um, now, guy on my group the other day, uh, Rob, um, said he had found the sickest juice known to man. And obviously, you know, I was tagged in that post because I like to try these uh, disgusting juices. And he sent me it, and it's here. And the moment I opened this, and it's sealed and everything, the moment I opened it, I wanted to hurl. It smells like death. Um, I haven't even opened this one yet, okay? My God. And it's even sealed in another one. This could be it. Oh, my God. This is durian e-juice. Durian? I, I, I said that right. Right. Um, now, I've got a little write-up here of what durian is. Okay, let's have a little look. You ready? The durian is the fruit of several tree species belonging to the genus Durio. Okay? Regarded by many of people in Southeast Asia as the king of fruits, the edible flesh <laughs> flesh emits a distinctive odour that is strong and penetrating even when the husk is intact. Some people regard the durian as having a pleasantly sweet fragrance. Others find the aroma overpowering and revolting. It looks like a giant fucking conker, right? This thing looks like a giant conker. You know when they're still in their little sharp things, right? It looks like one of them. Um, now, oh my God, it smells disgusting. Well, people actually eat this shit. So, okay. Oh my God, it really does smell that bad. I'm not lying. It, that's... It, I'm really scared, actually. I think I'm scared for the first time. Freshly picked, uh, freshly whipped. Uh, I'm, just, oh, I'm gonna have to fucking I'm have to buy another Snapdragon after this. I think. Oh my god, what is this? And all what milligram? It's three milligram. Thank God. It smells disgusting. Any of you eaten during fruit? I've never. I oh, first time I fucking heard of it. To tell the truth, so common. I've only ever heard of apple. It smells disgusting. It honestly does. Um, what are we on? I'm worried about this one now. It really does smell vile. Oh, 25 watts, okay. Well, there's some more. This could be it. Wish me fucking luck, everyone. It's quite nice. smells disgusting though it's kind of creamy tastes a bit custody what a fucking letdown Rob wanker oh no that won't last him but it's still ain't bad it's not bad. It's why does it smell like death? It fucking smells awful, but it vapes all right. There's nothing wrong with it. Little smoke ring for you. Sorry, Rob, mate. You were wrong.
Well, that's durian fruit. Here we go. The durian native to Southeast Asia has been known to the Western world for almost 600 years. Oh, it smells about 600 years, uh, to be honest. The 19th century British naturalist Alfred Russell Wallace described its flesh. Why do they keep saying flesh? As a rich custard, highly flavoured with almonds. I can see the custard bit. Yeah, well, that's a bit of a letdown. Um, tastes alright. Nothing wrong with that. Um, just smells like death. It does. It smells fucking disgusting. Uh, I'm going to wrap that up a couple of times again, and then I'm going to go and wash my hands and stuff. But, yeah, it don't smell nice, but it vapes all right. So, bit of a letdown. Sorry about that, guys, but, you know, blame Rob. I do. So, I think that's it. I think, uh, I think that's everything for today, you know. Um... Thanks for listening to me moan um, and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, oh well. Uh, it's vaping, isn't it? Like a good moan. Taste something better now. So, yep, yeah, that about it. That about sums it up until the next one. So, uh, thank you very much for watching this washing. For watching this waffle. I need a wash now. And uh, I will see you on the next one. Stay safe.